So let me turn to our mistakes, and let me start with the mistakes that we made. First, our governance processes failed. Secondly, our commercial approach led to a fee that was too large. Three, we did not admit where we were wrong. And worse, we did not say sorry quickly enough and clearly enough. Let me go through each of these, starting with why our governance processes failed. We are proud of our historic impact in South Africa and our role supporting the localization of the economy through partnerships with smaller black-owned companies in keeping with the country's empowerment policies. However, we now know that there were issues with Trillion and questions about regiments regarding state capture. Our involvement stemmed from two different mistakes. First, when we started working with regiments, we did a quick but insufficiently robust due diligence. It was inadequate. Second, with Trillion, we did do a robust due diligence, but it should have been done earlier. Some of our people had raised concerns about Trillion. The due diligence should have been completed before any work started. We were so focused on delivering our work that we did not focus enough on the broader context and risks. That was wrong. We deeply regret that mistake. This meant we did not recognize soon enough how our focus on making a difference at ESCOM and our commitment towards supplier development partners could be abused. We should have. We did not recognize soon enough that the governance structures of ESCOM and possibly Transnet were compromised, and some managers were not working in good faith. We should have. In November 2015, before the project began, regiments explained to us that its consulting unit was to become trillion. Some on our client service team took Mr. Wood at his word that credible and respected black owners committed to supplier development aims were lined up. We should not have accepted this. Then, as we wound down at ESCOM mid-2016, our client team continued to interact with Trillian at ESCOM, even after Trillian had failed our due diligence and no contract existed between McKinsey and Trillian. They should not have. Finally, our client team relied too much on their relationships at ESCOM. They took ESCOM's board approval, ESCOM's appointment letter, and ESCOM's management word at face value. They should not have done so. My view is that the attitude within our team was not right. They were not attentive enough to the fact that Trillian was a new entity or to the scale of the challenges facing ESCOM. Crucial administrative steps for our work at ESCOM were not followed correctly, and our record keeping was inadequate. There were additional errors of process that impacted our ability to make the right judgments at the right time. Yes, the state capture connections were hidden to us, the authorities and the public, only coming into full view in the middle of 2016, but we should have questioned Trillian with greater skepticism and greater urgency. Our professional investigators, who conducted an extensive check in Trillian, did not uncover definitive evidence but they did raise sufficient concerns for us to decide that Trillian had failed the due diligence. This stopped us moving forward with a potential partnership in March 2016. So ultimately, our risk controls did work. But we should have done things correctly from the start, including establishing clear parameters for McKinsey partners, managing the work at ESCOM, while our deliberations on Trillian were underway. This all amounts to an unacceptable breakdown in our governance processes. It should not have happened. 